بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فأما الإنسان إذا ما ابتلاه ربه فأكرمه ونعمه فيقول ربي أكرما وأما إذا ما ابتلاه فقدر عليه رزقه فيقول ربي أهانا كلا بل لا تكرمون اليتيم ولا تحاضون على طعام المسكين وتأكلون التراث أكلا لما وتحبون المال حبا جما كلا إذا دكت الأرض دكا دكا وجاء ربك والملك صفا صفا وجيء يومئذ بجهنم يومئذ يتذكر الإنسان وأنا له الذكرى يقول يا ليتني قدمت لحياتي فيومئذ لا يعذب عذابه أحد ولا يوثق وثاقه أحد يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي Ayah number 15 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَأَمَّ insan He's telling us about some nature of a human being and of course the creator of our nature knows our, be- our nature better than ourselves we don't even know what's within us but the creator of the nature knows what he has created in us And accordingly in Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps on informing us of different things that are in our nature. And especially these last surahs of Al-Qur'an al-Kareem talk a lot about the nature of a human being. And accordingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us what to do in order to work on getting better. Since there are certain things in our nature, that are good and there are certain things in our nature that are bad. By nature, our qualities of a human being can be used for good and evil at the same time. It's just like a knife in the hand of a person who might use it to cut an apple and might use it to hurt a person. Same thing our nature. Take an example of an anger. A person might use the anger to hurt people and shout at people, curse at people, has no control over his anger. But at the same time, another person might use the same anger to protect his deen and to protect his honor, his wealth and his family. Anger has to be there. It's part of our nature. If we say there is a human being that has no anger, and we feel that we are admiring that person, really we are not admiring the person, we are putting him down that this quality, this nature of a human being is missing from this person. Islam never teaches us that never get angry. If there is no anger at all in Islam, then where the jihad would come from? In the battlefield, the person says, no, I'm not supposed to get angry. And the enemies are attacking him and he says, no, I'm supposed to be humble. Of course, that won't help in the battlefield. Well, ayahs of Allah, if someone is cursing at Allah or at the Prophet of Allah or our own parents or ourselves, and we feel, no, that's fine. Let him keep on cursing. There is certain places where Islam will allow us to use our anger and certain times that it becomes fault for us to use our anger. Someone curses at <coughs> Quran, well, ayahs of Allah, in front of us. What are we supposed to do? Islam will force us, now use your anger. And stop this person from doing whatever he's doing with the Qur'an. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about our nature. And what does he mention about the nature? Inshallah, I will talk about it in few minutes after going over the wording of the ayahs. Let's look at the wording of the ayah. Fa'amma. Fa'amma here means as far as. Fa'amma man a'ta. As far as those who give. And here, فَأَمَّ insan, As far as the human being. Insan means human being. 
And this is single. The ruler of it is Unas. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in another part of Quran al kareem Wa unasiya kathira. A lot of human beings. So insan is, an insan means human being. And now I would like to remind you, especially those of you who were with us during the month of Ramadan when we talked about Surah Al-Fatiha. And at that time, we said Alhamdu, two different words, Alif Lam and Hamd. Hamd means to admire, to thank, and Al over there we translated it as all. Now, Alhamdu means all admiration. Same thing, Al Insan here means all human beings. So Alif Lam here means all. So as far as all the human beings are concerned, their nature is such, إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّ إِذَا means whenever, when. إِبْتَلَى إِبْتِلَاءٌ means to test someone. إِبْتَلَى يَبْتَلِي means to put someone through a test. And accordingly it means a hardship also because hardships are also test for a human being. So to go over any test, hardship is ibtila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whenever al-insan, whenever human being, ibtalahu rabbu, rabbuhu means his Lord. Whenever his Lord puts him through a test. What type of test? How does he put him through the test? Fa'akrama. Ikram means to honor someone, to give someone respect. Ikramu al-dayf, honoring the guest. Ikramu al-rajul, honoring a man. Ikramu al-mar'a, honoring a woman. Akramahu, when Allah honors him. Wana'amahu, and he blesses him. Ni'ma means a blessing. Na'ama means to give someone a blessing. To give someone something. To give someone a ni'ma. So as far as human being, when Allah puts him through a test, ibtalahu rabbuhu, when his Lord puts him through a test, and what type of test it is? فَأَكْرَمَهُ He blesses him, he honors him, he gives him, وَنَعْعَمَهُ and he gives him his blessings. So the human being says, فَيَقُولْ قَالَ means to say. يَقُولُ He will say. So he says, Rabbi, Rabbi means my Lord. According to the Arabic language, when the Ya is added at the end of any word, it means mine. Rabbi, my Lord. Qalamun means pen. Qalami, my pen. Quranun is a Quran. And Qurani, my Quran. So, Rabbi, he says, my Lord, Akraman. He have honored me. Now the ayah is saying, still I'm not giving the tafsir, but literal meaning of the ayah, as far as, Insan, human being, and literal translation is every human being. Al insan, alif lam, means every human being. Ida, when, ida ma, whenever, ibtalahu rabbuhu, his Lord puts him through a test, fa akramahu, he honors him, wana amahu, he blesses him, fa yakulu, this person says, Rabbi, my Lord, akraman, have honored me. The next ayah, wa amma, and whenever, wa amma, amma, whenever, ida ma, ida ma ibtalahu. Same words are repeated, and whenever ibtalahu, his Lord puts him through a test. Fakadara alaihi rizqahu. Qadara yaqdiru. This is one of the very, is not difficult to understand, but for. In the Arabic language is one of the difficult words to decide it when it means what. Because qadara has two different meanings. One is, it can be driven from the word qudra. Qudra means power. Qadara yaqdiru means to be able to do something, to have the power of doing something. If you want to ask someone that, do you have the power of doing this? Hal taqdiru ala hada? Do you have a power over this? And at the same time, the word qadara can mean to make it difficult. 
to make things very narrow, difficult, hard. It can be it can mean one of the two things because it can be driven from two different sources. And both of them, even the original sources, both of them start from Qadara Yaqdiru. This is the reason once Muawiyah radiallahu anhu was reciting Quran al Karim. And he went through an ayah of Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذَنُّونِ إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِبًا The noon, the person, noon in Arabic language when is not, just as a letter, is spelled out, noon, wow, noon. It means fish. So the one with the fish, the one that belongs to fish, the noon, إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِبًا When he left, when he went, ذَهَبَ يَذْهَبُ To go, when he went, مُغَاضِبًا And he was upset, he got his people upset and he left. Fadanna, he thought zan means to think. He thought Allah naqdira alayh. Now Allah naqdira alayh means according to one, according if we take it from the word qudra, it means he thought we have no power over him. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu was reciting this surah and now he went through this ayah and he started shaking up. How come a Prophet of Allah think that Allah has no power over him? And normal human being can never think that Allah has no power over him. Forget about a Prophet of Allah. And this is kufr for a person to think that Allah has no power over me. Because I left that town, now Allah has no power over me. This is kufr. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu didn't know how to solve this problem. And he sent this question to Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu. Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu, right away, he sent to send the reply to Muawiyah radiallahu anhu saying that if you match this ayah with another ayah that is in Surah Al-Talaq, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِيُنْفِقْ ذُو سَعَةٍ مِّن سَعَةٍ When it comes to spending on our families, every person with wealth, should spend according to his wealth, according to what Allah have blessed him. If Allah has given us some wealth, we should even spend more on our families. وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ And whoever sustenance became very hard on him. قُدِرَ here means became hard, difficult. Same thing over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَى As far as human being, when Allah puts him through a test and فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ He makes his sustenance, risk means sustenance. When he makes his sustenance, قَدَرَ makes it difficult on him, makes it hard on him. فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ Then this human being says, قَالَ يَقُولُ means to say. Then this human being say, رَبِّي My Lord أَهَانًا أَهَانَ يُهِينُ means to humiliate someone, to put someone down. This person says, Allah, my Lord, has humiliated me. Now, looking at these two ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the nature of a human being and a mistake that a human being makes in this life through his thinking. What the message of the ayah is, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whenever I give human being something, he feels that he became very close to me. And when I take something away from a human being, he feels that I'm upset with him. Looking into the detail of the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that al-insan, every human being has a difficulty, has a problem with his thinking. We have to even control our thoughts and know what to think about. Of course, there are thoughts that will just pass through our mind. What are the thoughts that we can support in our life? And then use them so that they can be of any value to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I always test all the human beings. Every human being that comes to this life is put through a test. There is no human being in this life who is not going through a test. Because each and every one of us, either we are receiving some blessings, or we are losing something. 
truly speaking, even the time when we are losing something, we are receiving millions of others that we don't realize. But anyway, normally we look at the ones that we are losing and we don't remember the ones that we are receiving. A person, for example, who does not have the electricity at his home and that person complains that every time I lose the electricity, does not realize that still thank Allah that you have the electric you just lost the electricity there are so many people who even lost their eyesight so even if they have the electricity it does not help them but normally we look at what we lose we don't look at what we are getting it says one of the scholars of Islam he was walking going towards the masjid, he walked out of his home going to the masjid barefoot, have no slippers and no money to buy slippers for himself. And he's saying, he's thinking <coughs> that, Ya Allah, look at so many other people, they are not even going towards the masjid. <coughs> and they have nice, nice shoes on them. And I don't even have the money to buy slippers for myself. And as he's going, he sees a person, a limb, a person who doesn't have a lack. That person going towards the masjid, he said, Ya Allah, I really thank you for at least blessing me with these feet. That person has shoes, has the money to buy the shoes, but has no foot to put the shoes on. What is he going to do with the money to, put, to buy the shoes on? At least I have my feet. Every human being in this world, in this life, is going through a test. Either we are receiving some blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's always or sometimes we are losing something that we feel, we just look at those things that we are losing and we feel I'm losing a lot. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the person who's getting and the person who is losing, both of them are going through a test. We many times, according to this ayah, and we can really look at our nature also, when we are getting, we don't feel that I'm going through a test. When we are earning and life is going very peaceful, and there is peace of mind at home, at work, everywhere. We never think that I'm going through a test. But when we go, when we go through a hardship, now we think that this is a test for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, we are mistaken. We are going through a continuous test in our life. In the Amattalahu, two types of ibtila in two different ayahs. One ibtila is فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعْمَ to bless the person, to honor the person, to give the person, this is a test. The other is ibtila is فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ rizqa. Make the sustenance and this life difficult on this person. Both of them are tests. <coughs> and we really need to realize that we must pass both of these tests, not the, just the test of the hardship. Not only when we get the hardship, we go back and now we wake up during the night time and the person is performing Salat al-Tahajjud and making dua at night time. Why? Because he has a problem. Tomorrow he has an interview for work and he's not able to find a job. Or he might be laid off. So now at time, night time he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But continuously the days when he's receiving from there and he has peace of mind at work and he's making all the money. At that time, the human being does not realize that this is also a test for me and this test is in fact worse than the test of losing because when we lose, we ourselves naturally will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when we gaining, that is the time when we normally fail the test and we feel that I'm getting it so I really don't have to go back over there. I don't have to knock at his door at this time. I will go to him whenever I need him when I will start losing. That is the test that normally human beings fail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps on giving. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then, He puts the disbelievers, kuffar, through even a worse test. Which is the worst test? The worst test is to just keep on giving the person without making him go through a hardship. Look at Fir'aun, Pharaoh. Got the kingdom. People are worshipping him. People are doing sajda to him. He says, Ana rabbukum al-a'la ma alimtu lakum min ilahin ghayri. There is no Lord other than me. And if Musa alayhi salam claims that there is another one, then Ana rabbukum al-a'la, I am the greatest Lord. Well, and Allah 
did not take all of this. A person like us will say, let's destroy everything he has. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not destroy everything he had. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued giving him and take more and more and more. Until when he thought that I have everything I need in the life and there is nothing more he could hope for, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he, when he punished him, and he, was, he threw him in the water, you can say he threw him in the ocean. And imagine the type of test he went through. Taking, getting, getting and getting. And finally, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed him was not that he is sitting in his castle and the castle was burned down or he, loosed his wealth, he lost his wealth. Everything, all the wealth and everything that he had was exactly in the same situation, same position. All he went with was his own horse, his one horse that he was riding to follow Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. He went into the ocean and he was drawn in the ocean, him and that horse and his army, the rest of the castles and wealth and everything else is just the way they are. This is a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there are two different types of tests that human beings go through in this life. One is the test of getting something and getting the blessings and the test of having the peace of mind. That is a test. And the second thing, test is of losing things in our life and losing the peace of mind and losing the sustenance or whatever else we lose in our life. There are two different types of test. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when the person, human beings have a wrong judgment. This is, our, this is the mistake that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that when we get, we feel we are getting closer to Allah. This is wrong. This is a mistake. Getting something doesn't mean I'm getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And losing something doesn't mean that now Allah is upset with us. This is the mistake the kuffar used to make. When they had the wealth, they thought that if Allah has given us so much, that naturally means that He loves us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no. Wealth has no connection with the love of Allah. Otherwise, وَالْعِيَازُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْعِيَازُ بِاللَّهِ Fir'aun and Qarun would have been the most beloved people to Allah comparing to the other prophets of Allah. But wealth, having wealth doesn't mean anything, is not a sign of being closer to Allah, and not having it doesn't at all mean being away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah doesn't like the person. In fact, if we look at the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, we will realize that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the greatest human being ever came to this world. And the greatest prophet of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him more than just something that he could survive on. Just enough for him to survive. And not only this, even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam realized that the test of taking, of getting the blessings is more difficult than the test of losing. Therefore, when he raised his hands to make dua for his own children, for his offspring, what dua did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam make? One of us will go for hajj. Feel that now my dua will be accepted. Ahmad Ka'batullah. I would like to make a special dua for my children. What dua would we make for our children? <coughs> they would get the great degrees, you know, they are in the university, so let them pass the exams with the best marks and get the nice, good job, high degrees with the best universities and whatever else. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he also made dua for his offspring and his children. His dua was, Allahumma ja'al rizqa ala Muhammadin quta. Ya Allah, Give every person of my offspring, make his sustenance just enough for him to survive. Don't give him more than that. This is my dua for my children. That Ya Allah, give my children only enough for them to survive. I don't want them to, to get too much. Qut. Qut means enough for us to have, to eat and to survive. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as far as human beings, this is the nature and this is a mistake that we make. إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّ when his Lord puts him through a test, فَأَكْرَمَهُ His Lord honors him. وَنَعَمَهُ And he blesses him, gives him ni'mah, blessings. فَيَقُولْ This person says, رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا My Lord have honored me. وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَى And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
puts him through another test. Ibtala, he puts him through a test. Faqadara alayhi rizqahu. Qadara means makes difficult. Alayhi on him. Rizqahu, rizqun means sustenance. Makes his sustenance difficult on him. Fayaqul, then this human being says, Rabbi, my Lord, ahanan, humiliated me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla, look at the next ayah, ayah number 17, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla, Kalla means never, not at all, Kalla, not at all, you're, any person who would think this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla, your thinking is wrong, not at all, then what's the reason, how a person is humiliated in this life, how the person loses the peace of mind in this world, how does the person go through difficulties in this world? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, a person might have a lot, and you will see this person going through hardships and difficulties. He has everything that he prayed for. He got the wealth, he got the wife, children, car, whatever he thought about having, he got everything. But still he feels that I'm in difficulty and I'm in hardship, and looks at others and feels those people are much better than I am. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions four reasons for that. Four reasons why we go through hardships in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bal mean instead. La tukrimun al yateen. You people do not ikram again. Tukrimun driven from ikram and ikram means to honor someone. And yateen means orphan. You do not honor the orphan. La tukrimun al yatim. You do not honor the orphans. This is the first reason of going through hardships in this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mentioned here. That people go through hardships. Yatim means orphan and ikram means to honor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just asking us to give them gifts. If we see a, an orphan and we know there is an orphan, just give him some money and feel that I am really helping this person. I am being a great Muslim. I am being a great person because I am sending some money to some orphans. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, No, this is not enough. Ikram al yatim is must. Which means honoring the orphan. Not just giving him. Even honoring him. After giving him, we feel that really I had, he has done a favor on me by taking this from me. And I am honored by giving him this. Ikram al yatim when a person just like in another hadith in one of the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he mentions six rights of every Muslim over other Muslims he says Ikram al dayf honoring the guest. What does honoring the guest mean? When a person comes to our home if we start feeling that I'm doing good to this person I'm being so nice to this person by inviting him and by preparing this food for him. So now we feel that it's my favor on this person. I'm favoring this person by inviting him and I'm doing something good to this person by feeding him at my home. This is against ikram. Ikram means we should feel great that at least this person accepted my invitation. And now we try to respect him. With that feeling, we will respect him. When we have a feeling that I'm doing something good to this person, then we will never be able to show the respect that that person deserves. Ikram al yatim means we give, the or, or we honor the orphans. If we see an, uh, an orphan, we really love these orphans. We do whatever we can to give them some honor, some respect, to show them the importance that you are very important to us. It's not your burden on our community. It's not your burden on us because you are orphan, because your father died, so you became burden on me. Wal-Iyazu Billah, wal so honoring the orphan is very important and not only orphan of course this means honoring every needy person. Yatim means, Yatim especially is mentioned because he has no father. Other people, a poor person, if we do not, if we disrespect him, he might come back and tell us something. Orphan, the poor child has no father to fight on his behalf. The child himself feels that I have no one to protect me. So if this person curses me or he, this person just gives me some money or throws the money to me, that take this money, he, has, he can do nothing. He needs it at this time. He's a child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you even have to honor the orphan 
And if we have to honor the orphan, of course, every other needy person we have to honor also. The second thing is, the second reason why we go through hardships in this life, and why don't we get the peace of mind in this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَحَاضُونَ عَلَىٰ طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ وَلَا And you not. La means no. حَضَّ يَحُضُّ means to encourage someone. حَضَّ يَحُضُّ means to encourage someone on doing something. So you do not, and especially the way this, this word, the form of this word in Quran, تَحَاضُونَ This is a detailed grammar of the Arabic language that there is a rule in Arabic language that if anything, any, any, any word is made according to تَفَاعُل تَحَاضُونَ تُقَاتِلُونَ which means two groups will be involved. تُقَاتِلُونَ you both fight against each other. تَنَاصَرُونَ نَصَرَ means to help. تَنَاصَرُونَ you both help each other. And you know any word you make it on this form, it will mean two groups being involved. Qital, qatala means to kill. Tuqatiluna, you kill each other. So it means doing something to each other. Wala tahaduna means you do not encourage each other. It has to be from both sides. That I tell you that we should help the needy people and you come back and you give the same feeling to me. Yes, we really need to help them. This is tahaduna means. Habda ya huddu literally means to encourage. And the way the form that's used in in this ayah means encouraging each other. So wala tahaduna and you do not encourage each other for what? Ala on ta'am means food, al miskin means poor. You do not encourage each other on feeding the poor. Ta'am, food, miskin, poor. So you do not encourage each other on feeding the poor. This is the second reason why we go through hardships in this life. And why we lose the peace of mind in our life. A person who has a lot of wealth, if that person will not encourage others on giving out his wealth to orphans and to needy people, to poor people, and he does not do it himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the wealth will not help him getting the peace of mind. The second, and the third thing, وَتَأْكُلُونَ التُّرَاثَ أَكْلَ الْلَمَّةِ Akala means to eat. تَأْكُلُونَ You eat. We eat what? التُّرَاثِ التُّرَاثِ means inheritance. وَرِثَ يَرِثُ وَرَثَ يَرِثُ It means to inherit something. وِرَاثَ Inheritance. ميراث. Same thing. وَتَأْكُلُونَ التُّرَاثِ You people eat the inheritance. What's wrong with that? Nothing. But the next part is telling us what's wrong. أَكْلًا لَمَّا تَأْكُلُونَ أَكْلًا means you eat a lot. تَأْكُلُونَ أَكْلًا means you eat a lot. And what does لَمَّا means? لَمَّا يَلِمُّ means to gather something, to collect a lot. If I'm gathering a lot of papers, I'm لَمَّا الْوَرَى putting all the papers together. لَمَّا in Arabic language means, and nowadays also in the slang language, even up to now is used, Lamma. Lamma al-mal, to gather the wealth. So Lamma, anything is to gather that thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when it comes the time for inheritance, you keep on gathering the inheritance as much as you can to eat it up, which means we try even to take other people's shares. Whether we get it haral, halal or haram, we need some more wealth. And when it comes the time to inherit people, even though this is not a wealth that we ever worked for, we never worked for it, this wealth belonged to some other people, that person passed away, but this, these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we like to get as much inheritance as possible, and not only our share, we try to take even other people's shares. And unfortunately nowadays, it's so common in the ummah, that a father passed away. Oh, boys, children, sons will gather will everything in over there and just keep on running the business the way it was running before without giving the sisters their share. Normally sisters lose their share nowadays. 
mothers many times lose their share. Or sometimes, if they have a hold on it, they will grab everything possible. And especially in this, in this part of the world, where if the business is under someone else's name, is one of, under the name of one of the sons, or under the name of a wife, that person, even though the business is under someone else's name, we, there was understanding and everyone knew that it does not belong to this person, it belongs to the deceased person. We have to distribute it equally according to the shares that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divides in Quran and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have explained in their hadith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the third problem we have is ta'kuluna turar you eat up all the inheritance aklan lamma all together put it all together and eat it up which means halal and haram your share and other shares and this generally it is talking just about inheritance and generally it means eating up anything that is haram grabbing any wealth from a haram, haram source so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as the person will take anything from a haram source then that person will not have the peace of mind in his life. This is the third reason why we lose the peace of mind and we go through hardships and difficulties. And the fourth one, تُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا jamma. أَحَبَّ يُحِبُّ means to love. حُبٌ love. تُحِبُّونَ what? You love what? المال. You love the wealth. حُبًّا jamma. What type of love? Jamma yajimu means too much. Jamma yajimu means so much, too much. Hubban jamma means you love it too much. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the fourth reason for having hardships and not having the peace of mind in this world is that we love the wealth too much and anyone who will love the wealth too much, that person will always be suffering this life. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, لَوْ كَانَ لِإِبْنِ آدَمَ وَادِيًا مِّنْ ذَهَبٍ If a human being will have one valley full of gold, he will be hoping to have another one. If he will have two, he will say, I just need one more, and then it will be enough for me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَلَنْ يَمْلَأَ فَاهُ إِلَّا التُّرَابِ Nothing can fill his mouth except fill his mouth except the dust. When he will go under the ground and you put the dust on him, that will be the only time when he will say now is enough. Otherwise, he will just continue taking more and more and looking for more. Imagine ourselves. Ourselves. There was a time we thought just this education. I will get this degree and is enough. Now I will just get the work and is enough. Find a good job. If I get a good job, this is all I need. Then I just need a good wife. Then I just need a good child. Now I got the wife and child, I just need a good home. Now I just need a good furniture and transportation. After, after having all of these, now I just need a good education for my child. I just need a good job for my child. And the person dies in the same process. It never ends. You love the wealth a lot. Too much. And if we look at this point in the ayah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, love the, the love of the wealth, when it is too much, then of course, it's something that will bring the hardships and difficulties in our life. But normal, general love of the wealth, that is part of our nature, and all of us love the wealth. We all love the wealth. There is something that we have, we like it. We have a home, we like our home, we love our home. We have a car, we like our car. We have a uh, clothes, we love our clothes. Whatever we have, we have some love for these things, and that's the only reason we protect them. If we have no love for them, we won't protect them. To have love just enough to protect and to use is not haram. But to go beyond limits and to love it so much that it becomes now a total concern of our life. That what will happen to my car? What will happen to my home? What will happen to this? Now, as it, it starts disturbing the whole life, and uh, every time we are thinking about increasing, protecting, running after, and getting more, then of course this is something that is not liked by the Sharia of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is something that will make us lose the peace of mind in this world. وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا jamma. You love the wealth a lot. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, up to this point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
have told us four reasons why human beings lose, lose the peace of mind in this world and why human beings go through hardships in this life. And then in the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us a misunderstanding that normally we have in our mind that when we get a lot of wealth, we feel we are blessed by Allah and we start losing the wealth, we feel that Allah is disrespecting us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, I am not disrespecting you by taking something from you. If you lose something, it's not a disrespect. You will be disrespected. You will lose your peace of mind if you will do one of these four things. If you will not honor the orphans, if you will not encourage each other feeding the poor people, if you will, not, if you will start eating up everything haram and if you will start loving the wealth more than you are supposed to, then that's the time when you will start losing the honor and respect in this life, and that's the time when you will start having difficulties and hardships in this life.